Hello, my name is Dori Klesis, and I'm with Mount Sinai. Today, I'm with two distinguished guests. Uh, Deborah Arnott is the Chief Executive of Action on Smoking and Health in the UK. She's also a Honorary Fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and a public health expert. We're here also with our own Dr. Fred Hirsch. He's the Executive Director of the Center for Thoracic Oncology in the Tisch Cancer Institute at Mount Sinai and a Professor of Medicine at the Icon School of Medicine in New York. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Deborah. how far have we come in terms of educating people about the risks of tobacco? People understand the risks, but unfortunately it's an addiction of childhood. The vast majority of smokers start smoking um, before the age of 18 and before they really understand the risks and then they become addicted. My concern is not so much educating the public because I think people know how harmful it is. It's about doctors because doctors aren't doing enough to actually um, encourage smokers to quit and smokers need help. So, for example, if a patient um, comes before you and they're a smoker, the single most important thing you can do is get them to quit smoking will improve their quality of life, the length of their life, and also the success of their treatment. Um, yet that's just not happening. For example, uh, with lung cancer patients um, in the UK, I don't know what it's like in the US, but in the UK, 30% of people at diagnosis of lung cancer are still smoking. If they quit smoking, they can double, nearly double their life expectancy. So the average life expectancy on diagnosis in the UK is uh, around a year. And it can be increased to two years if they're encouraged to quit, but they're not getting that. Everyone knows that smoking is harmful. Smoking causes lung cancer. Um, but uh, everyone doesn't know what are the consequences of quitting smoking. Of course, prevention is a primary goal. We don't want people to start at all. And there should be even more educational uh, aspects related to younger people today they move into e-cigarettes and all these things which give a cultural habit and is easy to turn into uh, tobacco products but um, there needs to be uh, more more um, uh, comprehensive education strategy in my opinion yeah but I still think doctors need to do more because um, doctors have this sort of view, and I've talked to lots of doctors, oncologists say it's family doctor's responsibility. Family doctors say it's the specialist's responsibility. And actually, um, they also think, oh, well, if someone's still smoking when they've got lung cancer, then they're not going to quit. But if their doctor tells them to quit, they can almost double the chances that that, that person will quit smoking. And if you don't say to your patient when they're diagnosed with lung cancer, you should quit smoking, then the patient thinks, well, there's no point. It's not going to make any difference, but it will. And so what can we look forward to? What's the future? What can we all do to educate the doctors, the patients, the people about uh, tobacco? I foresee that lung cancer screening uh, will be um, um, more and more implemented uh, both in the United States and in Europe. There are, uh, as you probably know, significant data showing a reduction in lung cancer mortality. Uh, for lung cancer screening with low dose CT. Uh, the first study in the United States, the NLST study, showed the reduction of lung cancer mortality with 20%. Um, a quite similar study in Europe, uh, including a little bit younger population as well, showed uh, recently a reduction of, uh, lung cancer, uh, of lung cancer mortality with 26% uh, among men and even higher among women. So I think uh, lung cancer screening needs to be better implemented uh, all over. And uh, the reason I'm mentioning it is because with lung cancer screening, there needs to be attached smoking yeah. cessation programs. Mm -hmm. And that is important, and uh, we shouldn't lose that aspect. 
uh, I, I completely agree with you, and um, we've learned from the um, evidence from the US about uh, the effectiveness of screening, and, and they're starting to implement screening programs in the UK. But what really concerns me is that um, smoking cessation isn't fully embedded in those um, in those campaigns. And if you screen and find someone's um, uh, not got lung cancer, but they're still smoking, then You've got to you've got to help them to quit and tell them that that's important. You really have because, as Dr. Hirsch pointed out, I mean, smoking is still um, by far and away the the most uh, significant cause of lung cancer. And the smoking cessation programs have proved to be successful. Correct? Absolutely, it's well. They're so cost effective. I mean, I was looking at data on um, one of the most recent lung cancer drugs, um, which can increase life expectancy but has bad side effects, and it costs um, in the UK $55,000 per quality adjusted life year, which is a way of measuring how effective it is, compared to $10,000 for smoking cessation. And smoking cessation treatment has no side effects. I mean, it only has an upside, whereas all cancer drugs have downsides, don't they, Dr. Hirsch? They're not—they're not—they're yeah. not, um, um, they're not um, harm-free no. um, because they have to be so toxic in order to kill the cancer. Yeah, so uh, they all comes with some side effects. That's for sure. Uh, now, talking about the future of uh, tobacco, you know, I think still uh, we are talking lung cancer screening, we are talking uh, tobacco cessation programs, but. Uh, in my opinion, uh, we shouldn't forget it starts with the, with the, with the kids and the youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, I'm definitely not in favor of neither e-cigarettes nor marijuana. Uh, um, I think uh, that raises a culture uh, and it is easy to turn it over to uh, nicotine uh, and tobacco uh, consumption. Uh, through this uh, culture, I, I well, we have we have different um, different view experience on in the UK. I okay. mean, not on marijuana because it's not legal in the right. UK, um, but on e-cigarettes, uh, they've proven to be a very effective way of helping adult smokers quit, and that's the only way they're promoted. Um, we do surveys of adults and of of um, youth and um, use of e-cigarettes and we're not seeing an epidemic of e-cigarette use in the UK partly because e-cigarettes in the UK are promoted um, for adult smokers to quit with boring images of middle-aged men using them um, but if you look at but if you look at uh, what's happened over the period of time where e-cigarette use took off in the UK uh, we've seen the number of smokers decline from 9 to 7.6 million while the number of people vaping um, who are almost entirely smoking or ex-smokers has increased from 700,000 to, over the same time period, about 2.9 million. And over half of those now are people who are no longer smoking. Um, and a recent randomized controlled trial in the UK of using e-cigarettes in a, a stop smoking service environment where people were getting behavioral support as well, yeah, showed, can I just finish, yeah. showed that um, they were over twice, well, nearly twice as effective as traditional licensed medicinal nicotine. And uh, at population level, they've been estimated to lead to an extra 60,000 um, uh, long-term quits last year. So uh, not just ASH, but um, our government, our government, our, our medicines regulator, our public health bodies, our charities, health charities, um, and our medical organizations, the Royal College of Physicians and the British Medical Association, all support e-cigarettes, but only for use by adult smokers to quit. And, and that is a good reason, and I'm totally supportive for that, if you're talking, you having a tool for yeah. quitting smoking, yeah. uh, but what I'm afraid, I don't know the data, but what I'm afraid is when youngsters start with e-cigarettes, they can turn into tobacco consumption. I don't know if that is correct or not, if there are data on that, if the cultural, that yeah. is a different from, in, in you, the, from using yeah. it as a, as a tool for quitting smoking. No, it is. And, um, in, in the UK, our data show that 
there's no, there you know, is no con- wide variety of different um, surveys do not show that it's a gateway into smoking and in fact okay. do not show significant use by youth so that is uh, our most recent data is that amongst 11 to 18 year olds and that includes 18 year olds who are adults okay. um, that um, only 15 percent have ever tried e-cigarettes and amongst never smokers um, there are um, below I think it's about 1.1% um, use e-cigarettes more than once a week, and none use them daily. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not proving to be a gateway. It may be different in America. I don't know the data. I, know, I don't know the data <laughs> in, in America. <laughs> Prevention is the best medication. <laughs> so thank you so much to Deborah Arnott and Dr. Fred Hirsch. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.